You can say easily that this is of fundamental importance for all biological studies today. Examine the world from the outside, which we had to do before the 1960s, more or less, then we could see some genetic variation. We could see that some individuals were different from others. But on a whole, we had the opinion that for one trait, for an individual or for an organism, the, the individuals were more or less the same. And then in between, there was a new mutation coming up, which changed this trait a bit. And we could also experience that this mutation could be good, it could be under positive selection, but it could also be bad, and that was mostly the case. So this mutation was selected away by natural selection. But this picture is now completely changed, because when we go into the genes and we analyze the variation that is right in the genes themselves, we see a lot of variation. There is a huge amount of genetic variation. So what is all this variation about? That was the issue that was raised with the studies. And also there came up a model, a theoretic model to explain this, how we could understand all this variation. The first thing was the observation. The observation was made by actually going into the proteins that are directly mirroring the DNA molecule, but at that time you couldn't really investigate the DNA variation. So you had to look in the protein. And then the discovery was there's a lot more variation at the protein level that we could ever expect. And then the other discovery was how can we understand this variation? How can we explain it? If there is a lot of variation, can this variation really be under natural selection? Because in that case you expect only the best variants of the genes to be present, not a lot of different gene variants to be present for the same trait. More or less all individuals of a species is actually genetically unique. So unless we are twins from the same egg, or if we have a plant population where you have clones of the same plant, Unless we are twins or clones, we have always different genetic variants for different traits. In more applied context, we can use this neutral variation to actually identify, for example, the stocks of cod. And that's useful when we want to manage the stocks in a very sustainable way. We need to know which fish belong to one stock and which belong to another stock. Because if you fish them in a mixed fishery, you can sometimes take too many of the small compared to the big stock. So now we use the genetic markers and we are screening the individual cod with the, using these markers. And we can divide them into these stocks and therefore manage the fishery much more sustainably than before. We can use this to actually build the tree of life to discover how closely related are different species. But we can also go into a population and actually distinguish which are the individuals here and how are they related. So that is a lot of information that we can gain from analyzing the genes and this genetic variation. It's like a fingerprint that each individual has in their genes. We have changed the picture how, over how the genetic background to what we see is shaped.